there has been a firestorm brewing, sparking rage and disbelief on multiple fronts as Japan charges full steam ahead to restrict the export of quantum computing technology and advanced chips to China. Critics worldwide are fuming at what they label as blatant technological warfare disguised as national security. They insist this is not just about safeguarding encryption or preventing weaponization. They see it as a ruthless tactic to undercut a rival's ascent and preserve a stranglehold on global innovation. Detractors argue that Tokyo, emboldened by whispers from the U.S., has chosen to light a political fuse that could detonate trade relations and escalate tensions in Asia. Meanwhile, defenders of the policy hurl accusations of cowardice at those who question the move, claiming that any hesitation would hand valuable secrets to a power they deem untrustworthy. From fiery debates in online forums to heated parliamentary sessions, the outrage continues to mount, with many bracing themselves for the fallout. Outspoken critics are not shy about calling these measures an act of economic sabotage, warning that Japan's advanced industries could suffer self-inflicted wounds if China retaliates. Others go so far as to declare that it risks alienating a vital trading partner, fueling hostility that could spill over into other areas of cooperation. Civil society groups decry what they see as a moral hypocrisy, after decades of championing open trade and technological collaboration, Japan appears to be slamming the gates shut now that another nation has started catching up. The outcry grows louder each day as accusations fly that these restrictions betray an unspoken fear of losing a competitive edge. Media outlets thrash Tokyo's leadership for caving to external pressure and stoking a dangerous confrontation with Beijing, insisting that the entire region's stability hangs in the balance. With so many forces tugging in different directions, observers caution that the road ahead is paved with uncertainty and every step could be a step into the unknown. Stay with us till the end as we unravel this controversial story of hypocrisy, manipulation, and economic sabotage. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Check YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Please subscribe, like, and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. In recent months, the Japanese government has contemplated substantial measures aimed at controlling the flow of technology with potential military applications. And this effort has generated a mix of support, concern, and outright criticism from various stakeholders around the world. While some observers argue that restricting exports of advanced semiconductors, quantum hardware, and other high XN components is a prudent move to prevent the proliferation of potentially dangerous technological capabilities, others see it as a politically charged maneuver that will inevitably escalate tensions and trigger reciprocal measures. One of the chief architects behind this policy, Abe Sato, a senior administrator within the Ministry of Economy, repeatedly emphasize that the overriding purpose is to preserve national security and uphold Japan's international obligations. Despite his assurances, skeptics at home and abroad wonder whether these restrictions are part of a broader strategy to constrain China's rise in the global technology race. Voices within China's diplomatic and economic circles insist that such controls will inflict severe disruptions to the intricate supply chains that have tied together producers of advanced electronics across Asia for decades, according to insiders familiar with the matter. Chinese firms, research institutions, and even smaller technology startups are already recalibrating their sourcing and manufacturing plans to adapt to what they perceive as a concerted effort to exclude them from leading-edge breakthroughs. These observers say that China's Ministry of Commerce, helmed by Li Ming in close consultation with other administrators, regards Japan's renewed restrictions as part of a trend emanating from the U.S. and the EU to constrain China's development in emerging fields like quantum computing and AI. One clear example of these concerns involves how quantum hardware could be used to decode Encrypted communications, a leap that would have dramatic consequences for both national security and commercial privacy. Yamanaka, one of the mid-level administrators in Japan's Technology Bureau, recently explained in a closed-door session that quantum computing's capacity for accelerated data processing carries both immense benefits for society and frightening potential for misuse. 
If a powerful enough quantum system fell into the hands of adversarial actors, encrypted transmissions that underpin financial transactions, government communications, and corporate secrets might be rendered transparent to prying eyes. Japan's move to regulate cryocoolers and other quantum components is widely seen as an effort to ensure that such capabilities remain beyond the easy reach of governments or organizations considered hostile. Even before these recent measures, Chinese officials repeatedly voiced their suspicion that Japan was aligning itself too closely with the U.S. approach. This sentiment was amplified when the government in Tokyo indicated it would add dozens of new entities to its watch list for dual-use items, effectively subjecting them to rigorous screening. While these targeted entities span the globe, a significant portion includes research institutions and technology firms in China. Some analysts speculate that Beijing may respond with countermeasures, such as restricting rare earth exports, which are vital in the manufacturing of high-tech components. On the other hand, more moderate voices in both countries hope that robust diplomacy can mitigate further escalation, allowing trade to continue in less sensitive areas. A persistent undercurrent in this entire situation is the evolving role of AI in national defense, corporate innovation, and societal transformation. Quantum computing promises to supercharge the capabilities of advanced algorithms, giving rise to concerns that any nation or company that attains a significant lead in this domain could upset the existing balance of power. Critics of restrictive export policies warn that imposing too many controls may stifle international scientific collaboration, ultimately slowing down breakthroughs that could benefit humankind. But proponents argue that national security must take precedence over open markets especially when the stakes involve cryptography and secure communications. Watanabe, an administrator in Japan's National Security Council, has been particularly outspoken about the necessity of these measures. In a series of closed meetings with legislative officials, she pointed to the rapid developments in quantum computing across multiple countries and underlined the difficulty of distinguishing civilian research from military oleaked research. She argued that while Japan has historically championed open trade policies, it cannot turn a blind eye to the potential dangers posed by the unregulated export of technology that could fundamentally alter defense postures. At the same time, she reassured domestic industries that they would receive streamlined licensing procedures whenever exports are deemed unlikely to pose a security threat. On the Chinese side, statements from spokespeople at the Ministry of Commerce under the direction of Zhang Wei, have underscored the potential for these restrictions to damage not only bilateral relations, but the global economy. One official press release characterized Japan's approach as short-sighted and harmful to the notion of interdependence that has linked Asia's two largest economies for decades. Observers within Japan note that such rhetoric highlights China's concern about a possible domino effect in which other technologically advanced nations follow suit by tightening their own export regimes. Indeed, parallels have already been drawn with similar actions from the EU, which is also examining how to safeguard emerging technologies without crippling cross-better collaboration. While the new regulations focus on advanced semiconductors, lithography systems, and quantum computing components, a broader question looms. Will these controls eventually extend to other disruptive technologies? Policy specialists note that advanced robotics, next-generation battery materials, and even biotech innovations could become subject to stricter oversight if tensions continue to mount. The rationale is that any technology capable of dual use, meaning it can serve both civilian and military purposes, might soon face heightened government scrutiny. For instance, quantum sensors could be employed in submarine detection systems. In the, and advanced lithography techniques might lead to microchips capable of powering sophisticated guidance systems for hypersonic missiles. Critics of Japan's tightening stance include some domestic lawmakers who fear economic repercussions. They argue that cutting-edge tech exports form the backbone of Japan's competitiveness in global markets, especially given the success of homegrown giants that supply critical components to electronics manufacturers worldwide. Restricting sales to a major trading partner like China might result in lost revenue, job cuts, and a diminished standing for Japan in an era where technological leadership is fiercely contested. Yet others believe that the risks of not acting decisively 
are even greater. They recall how previous episodes of unchecked technology transfers in the semiconductor industry contributed to the rise of formidable rivals that eventually eroded Japan's own share in global markets. This interplay of economic self-interest and strategic caution has produced a complex debate that continues to evolve. Just a quick reminder to hit the like bib below. YouTube has been restricting my videos a lot recently because of bots, so your like does help out this video massively in terms of the algorithm in YouTube. Despite these internal disagreements, the official narrative remains consistent. Japan must balance commercial freedoms with the responsibility to prevent technology from feeding into potential weapon systems. Nishimura, speaking at a panel discussion just last week, described the policy as measured, insisting that legitimate businesses would still find pathways to operate. He have done little to quell speculation that the actual granting of export licenses will be far more restrictive than many enterprises anticipate. Observers note that bureaucratic delays or ambiguities in the rules could effectively create barriers to trade, even if the policy's language sounds flexible on paper. Observers in Western think tanks argue that what we are seeing is part of a larger pattern, the weaponization of supply chains in strategic industries. They point out that semiconductors, advanced software, and quantum research are becoming the new frontier of national security. The controversies surrounding TSMC in Taiwan and ASML in the Netherlands are cited as parallel examples where governments find themselves embroiled in the question of how to control the export of key technologies without stifling commerce. In Japan's case, the challenge is amplified by its close geographic proximity to China and the extensive interconnections between their industries. Even though the global market for advanced electronics is vast, China remains a critical purchaser of Japanese high-tech products, from precision machinery to specialized chemicals. For policymakers like Tanaka, the tension is not merely about short-term profits versus long-term security. It is also about international credibility, alliance management, and compliance with multilateral control regimes that aim to prevent the spread of weapons of mass destruction. Some external commentators note that while quantum computers are not weapons in the traditional sense, their ability to decode encrypted data could effectively neutralize an adversary's defensive capabilities. Thus. In the eyes of many strategic analysts, quantum technology occupies a gray zone between civilian innovation and potential arms escalation, an area that demands stringent oversight. Supporters of the new Japanese rules argue that they are neither unique nor unprecedented. They liken them to the well-established frameworks that govern the export of conventional arms, chemical agents, or nuclear materials. In that sense, they view quantum computing and advanced semiconductors as merely the next logical addition to a long list of restricted technologies. One that has become pressing due to recent breakthroughs and the intensifying global competition, yet the argument has not dispelled concerns from multinational corporations that rely on frictionless trade for profitability. Given that Japan has historically served as a linchpin in the global electronic supply chain, the fear is that any disruption, whether through licensing delays or explicit bans, could reverberate across multiple industries and hurt innovation on a broad scale. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and comment. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now, and I will see you on the other side.